Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you know you are thirsty for God this morning, can you lift up your hands and just bless your Father? If you know you are hungry and you are thirsty for the grace, for the move of God in your life, can you just open up your mouth and just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Father, we love you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We'll just pray for you, God. Oh, I am. We love you, Jesus. Lord, it is me, the one you love. Lord, it's me. Lord, it's me, the one you love. Lord, it's me. Hey. Lord, it's me, the one you say. Lord, it's me. Lord, it's me, the one you save, Lord, is me. I am desperate for you, oh, oh, oh. for him this morning say Lord is me the one you love can you sing it to the Lord Lord is me come on everybody wherever you are this morning sing it to the Lord the one you say Lord is me Lord is me the one you love Lord is me ah yeah I am desperate for you. Oh, 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 oh. I am desperate. I am desperate for you. Oh, so know you. Oh, 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 oh. So know you more. Oh, 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 oh. I am. I am desperate. I am desperate for you. Oh, 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 oh. Say. Lord, we are 
Somebody lift your voice. You want God more. The more of God. More of your God. Less of me. More of you. 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 Less of me. To touch you. To see you. To know you. To touch you. To see you. To know you. To touch you. To see you. To know you. To touch you. To see you. To know you. To touch you. 
to see you, to know you, to touch you, to see you, to know you, to touch you, to see you. To see you. Down. That's the fresh grace of the Holy Ghost. He's just moving around, gently pouring himself in some people. All you need to do is open your heart and connect to him. He's pouring depths of himself. Holy Spirit, pour depths of yourself in us. I don't know who is pouring, but I see him pouring depths. For open hearts, I see him pouring depth from open hearts. Eniapusa ze beberita panos kaliadada. Oh, shali alabara gadi aladebo shalaba. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shali alabara gada bara Oh, we're not returning the same way we came. There's an infilling. Ashia patos epedia. Ibozadia. Miatos kipiatada. Eliadosha parakate diados ebedia topada. Oh. Oh, Shelly Alabalabariadaba. And the spirit be poured from the heart, and the feet become a fruit. Ashia to sipa, a lip muskeli atapara to sepedi adabada. Oh, spirit of God, spirit of God, ilamoshi atapara tebia to segedia. Spirit, thank you, thank you, 
There's a depth. 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 There are two people in you. The power of God will come upon you because there's a depth. There's a depth. The deep of the Holy Ghost. The, the, the depth of the Holy Ghost. He wants to pour in your life. And the reason he wants to pour in your life is because of what is about to become of you. There are two of you as you lift your hands. Uh, there is a depth that the shepherd to skemia. There is a depth of the Holy Ghost uh, is pouring into you because of what you are becoming. Uh, as many as receive him, they became, uh, they are becoming because of the outpouring of the depth of the Holy Ghost. There are two of you. Uh, you are becoming because of the outpouring of this depth. You are becoming because of the outpouring of this depth. You are becoming because of the outpouring of this depth. You are becoming because of the outpouring of this depth. You are becoming out of the outpouring of your depth. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. You are becoming. You are becoming. As many as receive, became as he's pouring. He's pouring for you to become. Holy Spirit, take over the service. You know what you want to do. I'm not aware you are aware. me preto se bradia gada araka kakateria na e celebre gadia lega do sagadia lava e papeta sa e papriato saria na e liato saba e tolia na maragadia na balada na ba take over holy ghost holy you can open your heart. Oh, we are desperate for you. Oh. Ah. I wish you can open your heart. We are desperate for you. Oh, my God. Oh, 
I have gone ahead and I've made the crooked path straight. The one who they close the door is who the wind of my breath has just opened that door. Zodiaca pa tu celia e me tu se breketia ta juzaba baruse e te piki tu se gliadada me tu se biata sata e pe ti suze kata. I have just added another age upon your life because you are not going to die anytime soon. I tu se peliata ru a te ketosita e peli azi me tu se e mi so katia ma poso a te pe jelemeli tabato. That sickness uh, that has been going on for longer. Whatever it is, I just took it back to the grave of Jesus uh, where I rose him from. Uh, and that sickness, uh, that disease, uh, I, the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, I took Jesus out. Uh, I am taking that sickness uh, back to that place. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are not a man. Not that can you walk as a man. You are the Spirit of the Most High. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for what you are going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let me turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor. The Holy Spirit is mightily in your life today in the name of Jesus. Somebody knows that the Holy Spirit is mighty. Put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. Please have your seat. Hallelujah. I see you here. Speak. Amen, amen, amen. And the Spirit said... I've given you a blind check. Seek me. And you shall find me. I'm at the door of your hands. Open up your hands. And let me in. A blank check. Somebody, I don't know whether you rise up on your feet. You are going to pray. Holy Spirit, I've just given you. Well, if you take it, it's yours. If you don't take it, it's yours. That's your problem. You want to pray. He said, I've given you a blank check. 
It was Kaliata Parataba. Am I not the creator of the heavens and the earth? Before anything was come to this earth and will ever be in this earth, I own it. I give you a blank check. It is you that determine what you write on it. Come on, lift your voice and begin to speak to the Lord. From nothing I created something. I give you what is empty. It's a blank check. Open your heart and speak to the Lord. Bring that limitation and write in that blank church of your heart. Isuse what is it you are looking for? Huh? What is it? Thank you, Father. So shall it be fulfilled by the prophet God. A blank church, if you open your heart, may it happen to you in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord and please have your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we are in an atmosphere you should not play with this morning. If you play with the atmosphere this morning, well, I don't know when next you have such atmosphere. I am desperate for you. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. I am desperate for you. Oh, 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 oh. I, am, I am desperate for you. When you become desperate for God, man will look for you. When you become desperate for God, doors you are struggling to open will open for you without you struggling for it. When you are desperate for God, sicknesses, disease, automatically, they give way. I am desperate for you. Oh, 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 oh. I am desperate for you. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know why the Spirit is leading me this way. But open your heart. I am desperate. Open the heart. Open the heart of yours. Oh, I am, I am desperate for you. Oh, oh, oh. I am desperate. I am desperate for you. Oh. on the keyboard I am desperate for you oh, oh, oh. I am desperate for you oh, oh. Spread for you. Oh, 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 oh. I am desperate for you. Hallelujah. Still remain in the keyboard for me. Just be there with your note or whatever it is. Uh, uh, the atmosphere is changing my, my, whole, my whole being. 
Hallelujah. Now, 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 let me, let me, let me quickly teach before I get into this thick atmosphere that you, you, you don't understand. The higher altitude series. And we started it with the first step of this teaching by paying the price of holiness. Because it says, it's those who are holy that can see me. Holiness is not what you look. Holiness is who you are. Holiness is not what you say. Holiness is who you are. It says those that be holy is a price you must pay. And then we came last Sunday and we looked at the price of consistency with God. The more you are consistent with God, the more continuously your connection with God is. Why? The consistency of God keeps you forever connected. This morning, quickly, I want to look at the price of faithfulness for higher altitude. The price of faithfulness for higher altitude. Listen to me. You might be hearing faithfulness before, but in the next 20, 30 minutes, I want to be able to give to you to understand what the depth of faithfulness can do in your life and it can influence everyone around your life. To be faithful is to have your heart, your heart bounded with the will of God by the Spirit of God. To be faithful is to have your heart bounded to the will of God by the Spirit of God. In other words, if you are faithful, your heart is bounded to his will by the Holy Spirit. You come to church every day does not mean you are faithful, sir. You sing every day does not mean you are faithful. You usher every day does not mean you are faithful. No, sir. You are a pastor every day does not mean you are faithful. To be faithful is your heart bounded to his will by the spirit of God. It's Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 3 to 4. Proverbs three and verse number three. The Bible says, "Let not mercy and truth forsake thee; bind them up on thy neck; write them on the table of thy heart." Verse number four. It not went and go deeper into the explanation of all. He says so shall thou find favor good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now go back to that verse number 3. He said let mercy and he says let what? Let mercy and truth the combination of those two is what carries faithfulness. Mercy at the place that God's mercy. Do you know how God's mercy kept Job? Even when God gave him to the hands of the devil, the mercy of God was still strong upon his life. I read another scripture. Psalm 37 and verse 38. <laughs> For the Lord loved the just. Psalm 37 verse 28. The Lord loveth the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. For the Lord loveth judgment and will not forsake his saints. In the new internet, he will not forsake his faithful ones. Now, when you say saints, you are talking about the faithful ones. 
So when you are talking about saints, not everybody in church is a saint. It is those who are faithful that are saints. Don't misunderstand this. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. He forsaketh not his faithful ones. The Bible says in the New International Version, wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. They that are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Faithful people are the ones that are called saints. Saints are not those who go to church. Why we God see Job as a man that is perfect? Is a man who is faithful. He was a saint. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Are you faithful at all? Because it's your faithfulness that qualifies you to become a saint. I hear people in the church say, saint, what saint are you talking about? So God is saying here, for the Lord love and judgment and forsaken not his faithful ones. Because not all are his faithful ones. Because all will call on my name and on that day I will say, I don't know you. You did great work in my name. I don't know you. You are not faithful. May your heart of your understanding be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go back to the scripture we started from the first Sunday. In the book of Job, chapter number one and verse one. The Bible began to talk about Job as I taught from two Sundays ago about what Job actually was portrayed. And I told you if you go study and you're a good student of the Bible or you are a scholar of the Bible, you will know that Job left in the time between Isaac and Noah. Between those times was the existence of Job. The Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz. Whose name was Job. And that man was what? Perfect. Do you know, God used the word first, perfect, before he came upright. It says, for the man was perfect. An introduction should have been, the man was upright, feared God, and then ended with perfect. But God said, for the man was perfect. He was a faithful man. And I said, if you read the Bible very well, that Job from chapter 1 to chapter 42, it talks about Job and his calamities that brought because of the contention. That's why I say when you come to church, uh, there are two people contending for you. The devil is also there contending for you. God is there for contending for you. But Jesus says, I am the mediator. I am speaking on your behalf. Lord, have mercy on this one. And the devil says, no mercy. Give them to me. And God is saying, oh, so should I give them to Jesus is pleading. That is what happens in church when we go to church. So some people come to church. Their heart is not there. That's why they leave the church and the devil oppress them. It's not because the church is evil. He said, this man is perfect. And I said last week, the word perfect, the mystery was consistent. You cannot be consistent and not be faithful. It's not possible. You can't. And the Bible says in verse number one, this man was perfect and upright and feared God. And he eschewed evil. He hates evil. And he, verse 2, and there was born to him seven sons and three daughters. And verse 3, finally, his substance. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. You cannot be faithful and not be heavily with substance. For faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Verse 1. For now, faith is the substance. 
When you are faithful, you carry substance. It says, and the substance of his substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxes, 500 she houses, and a great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east, because he was a faithful man. It's not just being a saint and not a substance person. You are faithful, you become a saint, and you carry substance. And then we read last week, we saw his friends came to him, three of his friends, and they began to speak the word of God to him. At a point in the conversation, go and read Job. I told you this month, read the whole of Job. At the conversation, the friends got angry with him. And they said, you don't want to listen to us. Sir. We have come to try to make you, to encourage you. We have come to try to push you forward. Or you are not listening. They began to say other things and things got wrong. Listen to this scripture. Let's go to the last verse of Job. Job 42. <laughs> Holy Spirit, that is Job 42 and verse 1. God now finally came to the scene. After God has spoken to Job to correct him in some certain things. He came to chapter 42. Then Job answered the Lord when God has spoken to him. And said, I know that thou canst do some things. What did he say there? What did he say there? Let me turn to your neighbor say, God can do everything. Let me turn to your neighbor say, God can do everything. Come on, tell your neighbor say, God can do everything. That's why Hebrews made it very clear. For with men it is impossible. For with God it is possible. And then he came to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. For those who would remain that faithful with God, all things shall be possible to them. He says, but without faith, it's possible to please God. For a comment to God must believe that he is and he is the rewarder of them. That so here he's telling you, when you become faithful, you come into that place that you don't see impossibilities. Now, let's go to Job, Job chapter 42. And then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and, thou, and that no thought can be withheld from thee. There is no thought. There is nothing. Even my enemies that are planning, God is aware. God was aware that the devil was there. God is aware of what the devil was. That God was not surprised what the devil did to Job because he was already aware. Faithful people, God is aware of everything about their life. It's not a shock. When the doctor, either Peter's side wife came here, she came in um, July or so, July or August, August, right? Yeah. I said, where's, where's brother Ima? Yes, you are there. God said to me, this is your iPhone, 15, eh? 15 plus, 15 plus 512. I said, Mr. Man, look for somewhere to sell. He says, sacrifice this phone. I said, but well, that man has a phone. Go get it sold. I showed him on Sunday. That was I showed you a Sunday before August. I said, go sell this phone. This money, I need to give it away. And when the woman had finished, I said, please give to my father. There's a war I see coming. But I lay a sacrifice so that I can fight that war. Mm -hmm. And then came the birth of my child. Supra doskevedia. Esimosh kaliadaba. Once you are faithful, sir, you become a saint. And then the Bible said, I know that thou canst do everything and that there is no thought that is withheld from you. I have already known what was going to happen. Verse number three, look at what the Bible says. He said, who is he that hided counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. I tried to understand you. The more I tried, the more I see that is a lie. And this is too wonderful for me. It's too much. Which I knew not. Look at verse number four. He said, Yeah, Shali Kaposadaba. That's why your heart is important this, this morning. Yeah, I beseech thee, I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare unto, and declare thou unto me. Verse number five. And then the Bible says, I have heard. Of thee by the hearing of the ears, but now my eyes see it the two types of understanding. The first understanding is the hearing, the second understanding is to see. 
Because those who hear, everybody do hear, but not everybody do see. When you begin to see, then you know you are walking in faithfulness. Verse number 6. The Bible says, Wherefore I ought myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken this word unto Job, that God finished his conversation with his faithful one. He now came to his friends. Now, you are consistent. You have good friends. But are those friends faithful to God? They were consistent friends. So, it is not just having an association that is consistent. You must have an association that are faithful. He says, after he has spoken with Job, he came and said, the Lord now said to Ephraim, the Amatite, my wrath is kindled against thee. You are consistent, but I'm not seeing your faithfulness. Because you talk to Job, you have gotten angry. He says, now. Go to verse number 8. Therefore, take unto thee seven bullocks and seven rams. And go to the, my servant Job and offer for yourself a burnt offering. I told you Job was not a, a prophet. He was a businessman. Who told you that as a businessman, people can't come to you to ask for blessings? For the blessings of Abraham impacted his generation because he's not just a businessman. He carried something. He was a substance carrier. These people came to, 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 to Job and offered yourself a bond of free and my servant shall pray for you. Ah! He's not a prophet. But he's a faithful man. He said, he shall pray for you. For him I will accept. Lest I deal with you after your folly. After your foolishness. So when you are not faithful, you are foolish. There's no two words about it. So there are foolish people in church. Following all manner of prophets. Jumping from miracles up and down. Not knowing who God is. Looking for who they will prophesy and tell you I'm how old are you. Is that your problem? I just need the prophet to touch me. My friend, you need God to touch you. Amen. Then. Ah, she dada. Begrusketi yalaba. And I will deal after your folly. In that ye have spoken of me the things which is, which is right, like my servant. I have not spoken. Not have spoken. You have spoken some things, but at the end of, that's why you read up to 32. You read further. You hear Job talking. The context of his association of consistency was not aligned with faithfulness. And then he says, you have spoken of me the things which is right, which is not right, like my servant Job. Now verse number 9. And then, these guys appeared. Verse number 9. Look at what the Bible says here. He says, so, Ephraim, the Amatite, and the other three of them did according as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord, what? Also do what? Do you know what I like about these friends? Any man who is faithful can never be disobedient. Any man. Once you are disobedient, it is a sign that you are unfaithful. And then, verse 10, Job, because God has spoken to him already. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. We like to read this scripture, but we didn't know the context from where it's coming from. Pray for your friends, pray for your friends. Who told you that kind of prayer you are praying? Let us pray for our friends so that we can, who told you that? Understand context of book before you begin to pray. He said, that's why my people, they pray and miss. You are praying and God is not even there what you are praying. He said, and then the Lord turned the captive because he prayed for his friends. Those friends who were consistent with him but they were not faithful. God appeared to them. They became obedient. They became faithful. Then Job prayed. And when Job prayed, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. That simply means he had 7,000. He now had 14. 
He had five. He now had 10,000. Somebody is here. It is your faithfulness that will give you a double portion of the blessing in the name of Jesus. The question is, are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you faithful? What are the true values in faithfulness? What are the true values in faithfulness? The true values in faithfulness. Now, you better open your heart. Because I've seen people in church, they die wretched and they, 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 they get broken down. Not because God is not faithful to them. They are unfaithful to God. It's a two-way thing. If God is trying to be faithful to you and you're not faithful, he cuts himself. What are the true values embedded or the true values in faithfulness or embedded in faithfulness? Number one, your faithfulness determines your reputation before God. Your faithfulness, it determines your reputation before God. So everyone has a reputation before God. Not I, I'm trying to protect my reputation. Listen to me. I don't need to protect my reputation. The moment my reputation is before God, there is no man that can destroy my reputation. You, you can't. You can't. It's not possible. Your faithfulness determines your reputation before God. So every time your picture, every time your name, every time your situation comes to God, God checks your faithfulness. That's your reputation. Show up for me, oh Lord. Show up for me. Yes, God wants to show up. But what's your reputation? I have found David, my servant. Go now. Fill thy horn and anoint him. Was David not anointed? He was. Faithfulness. What are the true values embedded in faithfulness? Number two. The way you handle the work of other people determines what God released to you. In other words, these are for businessmen and people who are working. The way you do your work is the way God will make your own work to work. You have not been faithful in another man's business who will give you your own. You have not been faithful in the things of God who will make you your own. You keep gossiping about somebody else's marriage, wait for your own turn. You keep destroying other people's marriage, wait for your own turn. Because you have not been faithful in that which was others. How then? Luke 16 and verse 12. Because this is important. That is why many of us don't have. Somebody give you his car to be driving. You drive it anyhow. You mess up somebody who gives you something. And you think God will give you own. <laughs> and if he had not been faithful in that which is another man's. Who shall give you that which is your own? This is, this is practical. This pastor Ike here, he's been working with a man before. Is he a white man or black man? Eh? A Muslim. Thank you very much, sir. Ah. I don't think that man will ever forget you because of your faithfulness to him. Not because of his religion. And today, you have your own. He was working for the man. But he was too faithful to the man, regardless of religion. So there are so many Christians that are not faithful. They can't have their own. Number three. What is the true value? Embedded in this higher altitude. Your promotion is hidden in your faithfulness. Your promotion is what? Hidden in your faithfulness. Some of you are not even faithful with your tithe anymore. 
We are not saying you must bring, but you are not faithful. He said, that promotion you are looking for is hidden there. Matthew 25 and verse 23. In other words, your faithfulness determines your promotion. Job had 7,000, but he remained faithful in all. And he had double as he had. Matthew 25 and verse 23. And his Lord said unto him, Well, good and faithful servants. Thou hast been faithful over a few. I will make thee. Remember, I will make thee. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as receive it, he gave them power to become. When you become, he makes you. I will make the ruler of many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Your promotion is hidden in that faithfulness, sir. And then number four. Being faithful in the little brings you to the big things. Being faithful in the little. Some of you, you see, that's why so many of you are coming to give testimony when you are hearing the evangelist talking about testimony. God has done something for you. You should have died. Because that sickness or whatever happened to you, some other people had it, they, they, they were dead though. But you, God did it for you. You want to keep quiet. You want to sit down on the testimony of God. Help me touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, change your ways. Look at the face of your neighbor. Say, neighbor, change your ways. You want to sit on God's testimony. Who told you you are announcing whoever prayed for you? You are, you are sitting on the testimony that God gave you. You can't do that. Because if you are not faithful in the little, how can he give you the great? Look at what the Bible says. Look at what he says. He says Luke 16 and verse 10. So Job, when he had many, he was faithful. When he had none, he was still faithful. Faithfulness has nothing to do with the multiplication you have. It has to do with how well you deal with the big or the small. Luke 16 and verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is little is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust is least is unjust in as much. So it's, this is, it's very straightforward. Many people, God just give you, you had no job. You had nothing. You have been sitting at home listening to whatever SABC or whatever news you are listening to. God now gave you a small job. You have the job. You started happily. But after you say this, this, this thing, this thing. God is saying, as far as you are unfaithful in the little, much cannot be your own. Say this thing. The first ever job I had in South Africa in a contract. The man say, uh, Mr. Ma, you are a student. You are just fresh. He's in Cartonville. I said, ah, sir, you know, I'll be traveling in Cartonville. He says, no. We're giving you 3,500. I said, ah, to be driving from here to Cartonville. Every day with that uh, Skoro Skoro uh, Audi, Audi, Audi Red. They'll be chopping for petrol. I said, no, sir, I accept it. The man looked at me. He said, okay, wait a minute. He went inside. I had a meeting, came back. I said, no, we'll make it 10. <laughs> Imagine I said, ah, 3 5? Me? That's why some of you have still where you are. Do you know me? Do you know my degree? Do you know how many years I spent in the university? That is why your life is still in diversity. Finally, in that part, the true values of it. A single unfaithfulness. Please write this and let it ring in your head. A single, one-time unfaithfulness may cost you or may spoil years of faithfulness. So if I have been consistently faithful, one unfaithfulness can destroy every other thing. One. Uh, that's why 
The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, attend to my word, incline their ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from the heart, but keep them in the midst of the heart. For out of it are the issues of life. You, you preserve your heart. You take it and you guide it jealously. One unfaithfulness can destroy years of faithfulness. Why? Because the devil was walking around looking for who he may devour. And then God made a statement, have you considered my servant Job? He says, is it not because of you gave him protection over the things he have? Take away all these things now. He's going to lose that faithfulness. They took everything. They took his child. He was still remaining faithful. He said, have you now considered chapter 2? Have you now considered my servant Job? He said, ah, give him sickness. Let his bones be pain. Let him not be able to. He will lose his faithfulness. So faithfulness has nothing to do with the content of what you have. Faithfulness has nothing to do with what you have. Faithfulness has to do with who you are. Why not faithfulness? will ruin all the years of your unfaithfulness. What are the pillars, as we begin to round up, to make you faithful? Number one is responsibility. The word responsibility is taken for the word to respond to your ability. So when you don't respond to your ability, you are irresponsible. In other words, you are not responding to what you have to do. So too many people. You will see people, you see, that's why, I, I, well, you know when you drive in South Africa, then I think about Nigeria. You know when you are coming on Sunday in Nigeria, you see everybody going to church. Whether those entering Molue, those entering bus, everybody's rushing, everybody's hurrying, everybody's going to church. When you see here, you just see some people. I don't blame South Africa, you know why? It's because of this thing I'm talking about. Too many irresponsible pastors, irresponsible bishops, irresponsible prophets, irresponsible apostles have denied the faith of many. If you see somebody, you see him drinking, if God is to show you what he was before, how he was in church, active. But he met one prophet who did abracadabra. And then the man says, uh -uh. Hi, Suga. I'm going back to the streets. That's the truth. Oh, revival started here. You don't know? The days of John Tilly. Revival started in South Africa. People were on fire for God. But their fire died because of irresponsible people responsibility. Job took responsibility for his life. Take responsibility for yourself. Stop blaming church. His responsibility made him to even be interceding for his children. Number two. Hmm. What is the pillar of faithfulness? Righteousness. What is righteousness? Right standing with God. Can I have two men, please? Or three men? Three men. Three men, come. Just three men, come quickly. Come stand. Three men, come stand. Stand. Yes, yeah, stand, stand. You stand in the middle. Okay, you come here. You stand here. Stand here. This is God being represented. Right? This is us here. Right? And this is not Satan. This is not trying to be God. This is just neutral. Myself. Just neutral. Nothing. Not God, not devil. Just like this. God says, be righteous before me. It's not the clothes. It's not the tongues. It's you standing right with God. When you stand with God, whatever he enjoys, you enjoy but many of us want to stand with our neutral self. And that's why you are hustling and bustling. You are working hard. You are putting effort where you don't need to. There's some things you don't do with effort. When you stand with God. Because with God, all things are possible. Your appearance is the appearance of God. That is righteousness. Stand right with God is righteousness. What God does not accept, don't accept it. 
Don't mix God with all these things that you are mixing. Too many people in church have mixed things up and down. You finish from here and you go and drink. Which, are you drinking with God? Huh? You are drinking. As you are drinking, is God drinking with you? So where are you standing? You are standing out of him. So that's why it's not right. Nobody says that you are dude. It is not right because God will not do it. Thank you guys. And then finally, what is the pillar of faithfulness? Is love for God. That's why I'm desperate for you. you. If you are desperate for God, your love will be too much. The, every other thing does not matter. I love God. I will obey him. If he says this now, I do it now. I don't wait to go and think. He said, Abraham, hey, bring Isaac now. He didn't, he didn't wait. Your proof of love for God helps to magnify your reputation of your faithfulness in the presence of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. Yeah, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 5. So when we talk about the love of God, it's not mouth. With all your heart, with all your energy, with everything you have got. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. It says, Yeah, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Ye shall love. You shall, not a commandment, so it's a choice there. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. How are you loving God? And you say you love God with all your heart, but not with your soul. Not with your strength. I said it yesterday when we were in the prayer meeting. You see people, when it is work, to go to work. When it's to come to church, watch them. Your love is too open to God. For you cannot deceive God. Whatsoever a man sweat, that shall he reap. The love of God is a pillar for your faithfulness. I conclude with this. So if truly faithfulness is a prize, then the measurement of your faithfulness is your obedience. The measure of your faithfulness is your, is your obedience. God said to Job, now prepare. You, you, you are listening to your friends. You are thinking and your mind was beginning to change. Now listen to me, Job. And Job began to repent in verse 42. And then God said to him, now I will go to that, your friend. And I will speak to them. They will come to you. They will pray for you. Remember, it was an argument Job was having with his friends. The test or the measurement of your faithfulness is your obedience. They throw me 28 and then we pray. They throw me 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass. Because it will definitely come to pass. People will see, they will hear. They will know that God is with you. Why, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments, which is commanded this day, the Lord thy God shall set thee on high. Higher altitude is for those who have decided to give God total obedience because it's the measurement of faith. He says, and it shall come to pass. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't change the times of God. It shall surely show that if thou shalt choice diligently 
hearken to the voice of the Lord the God, to observe all his commandments, which he commanded this day, that the Lord thy God, not any man, the Lord thy God, shall set thee on high. You will become on higher altitude. Men will see you. Men will know that God is with you. Men will know that you serve a living God. You don't need to tell them you serve God. They will know that definitely this one serves God. Job ended his life better than he began. Faithful man, life always progresses. Job had 7,000 sheep, but at the end he has 14,000. Your faithfulness must make you increase like the light of the jaws that shine it brighter and brighter. You don't go back, you go forward. Let me touch your neighbor say, neighbor, no more backwardness, I'm going forward. Talk to that person, neighbor. No more backwardness, I'm going forward. Rise up on your feet, somebody. You are going to pray that prayer. I'm not going back anymore. There is no backwardness. I leave those things behind. I'm going forward. I don't see anything that's wrong. I see things that are good. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. No more backwardness, I go forward. 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 It's a real I go forward. I go forward. I go forward. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I go forward. 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 I go forward from forward, forward only, backwards never. In the name of Jesus, I am desperate for you, Lord. Oh, oh, I, I am desperate for you, oh, 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 oh. When you become desperate for God, I don't see any man that is desperate for your life and his life not be taken. A man who is desperate for God is a dangerous person to touch. To touch. You are going to pray this prayer. It's your desire. It's a desire to be desperate for him. To be hardened, pursuing after God. You are going to pray this prayer and then we'll take our offering. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I receive, I receive the, grace the grace to be desperate, to be desperate for, you. for you. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. lift your voice and begin to pray. Shout up, I receive the grace to be desperate, to be desperate for you, to be desperate for you, to be desperate for you, to be desperate for you. Ilatosa ezebere ilagada ezika bradosu elemeleto el I am desperate for you. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He said, then when I separate those that serve me and those that serve me not. Men shall see. Men shall know. Men shall recognize. For if you have been with God, then men will know that you have dwelt with God. Moses came down. They knew he had been with God. I see you returning from this mountain and returning with that unusual presence of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you.